Let's apply a dark dramatic look on this waterfall scene using only Lightroom for the editing. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First, as always, we want to do the basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will bring up the base saturation. You can see the whole image has a stronger blue color right now. Then to start making the shot more dramatic, I am going to drop the exposure quite a bit. This will make everything quite a bit darker. And I want to continue making this shot darker by dropping the highlights. Then to push the contrast a little further, I'm also going to drop the shadows. Let's bring them down quite a lot. And I'm also going to push the whites for a little more contrast. By applying these changes, I'm setting up the base exposure, making everything a little darker while I later use targeted adjustments to make certain areas brighter again. Right now, looking at this program, you can see we do have a little bit of clipping, but that's not a big issue for now. We can fix that later. What I want to do next is work on the white balance. I think the whole shot is just a bit too cold, so I'm going to increase the temperature to fix that. All right, that's looking much better. Then I want to bring up the texture, giving this image some more sharpness. At the same time, I want to add some kind of autumn glow effect to it. And I'm going to do that by bringing down the clarity and the decays. By the way, sorry for my voice. I got a little bit of a cold, so I'm really struggling to record this video, but I want to get it done. So let's power through this. I also want to bring up the vibrance just to boost the colors a bit. All right. And that's the image after the basic adjustments. And let us compare the image to before real quick. You can see it's got a lot darker. One important note, we have a lot more details in the sky. We can spot some of the cloud structure up in here, which will become very important in the next step, which is the masking. So let's open up the masking pedal. And right away, let's work on the sky. I'm starting this with a simple sky selection mask. And this is not perfect, but it's good enough for the purpose of this adjustment. I'm going to subtract a radial gradient from this sky selection. I want to keep the brightness of the sky above the waterfall. But I want to make the rest of the sky darker. So just like this, we get a perfect mask for that purpose. What I'm going to do now is to bring down the exposure, making the whole sky except for that one area darker. All right, then I'm going to push the contrast and I'm doing this because I want to reveal more of that cloud structure and pushing the contrast helps quite a bit. What we can do as well is to push the clarity and I'm going to drag it all the way up. And just like that, we can see all that beautiful cloud structure, which will make this whole sky a lot more dramatic. That's exactly what we want for this scene. Actually, I might adjust the size of the radial gradient because the sky mask is not that perfect. So by making this bigger, I'm making the edge between sky and the landscape a little softer. But I think this is looking pretty good. Let's continue. I'm going to use a linear gradient for the very top part of the sky, which I want to make slightly darker even. So again, I'm going to start by bringing down the exposure like this. I'm um, also going to further bring up the contrast. Because of these adjustments, the colors might be might become a bit too strong. So I want to counter that problem by bringing down the saturation. All right, that's better. Then let me create a radial gradient right here for the bright spot in the sky above the waterfall. Now I want to make the sky brighter and this way give it a little more depth but I don't want to affect the foreground so what I need to do for that is to click on those three dots right here go to intersect mask width and choose select sky this way we are intersecting the radial gradient with a sky mask and we get this selection for it nice now what I'm going to do is to simply pull up the whites just make sure to check the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping in the brightest areas and I'm also going to bring up the blacks, which should help a little bit making this area brighter. Okay, you can see this will add a very cool effect to the sky and we can even further enhance it. Let's create another radial gradient just like this. Um, 
placing it over the same spot, I'm making sure it's overlapping the landscape in the foreground because now I want to add some glow effect. And for this reason, it's important we are overlapping the foreground to create the illusion of glow. And all we need to do is to bring up the blacks. This is looking perfect, but we can further improve this by dropping the dehaze. I think I'm going to drop it quite a bit here, just like this to create this really, really cool glow effect. Or maybe let's make it a little bit smaller, but this is looking perfect. Now we have worked quite a bit on the sky. Let's also work on the waterfall. And there's a super easy way to select that. Let's create a new mask and choose the object selection mask. Make sure the rectangle select mode is active. And with, the, with this mode activated, all I'm doing is to draw a rectangle around the waterfall. And you will see we get a almost perfect selection for the waterfall. Now we didn't select all the spray coming off of it. So I want to add a brush and I'm carefully brushing in a bit of the fog like this. Let's subtract a linear gradient from the bottom up because I don't want to affect the ground, but that's looking great. Now, what do I want to do with the waterfall? I want to give it more detail. I want to make the texture just a little more visible. So let's start by bringing up the highlights, which will push the contrast as we're making the brighter parts brighter, but not the darker parts brighter. So this should help. I think I'm also going to push the whites and that's where we can really make it pop as you can see, but we can still continue improving the texture. Therefore, we're going to use the texture slider itself, making the waterfall sharper this way. And I'm also going to use clarity to boost the midtones contrast in the waterfall. All right, that's looking nice. I think I want to further work on that waterfall area. I'm using another radial gradient with which I will be covering uh, the whole center part very, very roughly like this. And what I want to do is to push the contrast in here, but I don't want to increase the highlights. Instead, I want to make the darker areas darker. So I guess let's bring down the shadows. I'm going to drop them quite a bit to give this a lot more punch. All right, let's see if we can bring down the blacks as well. Just a bit like this. Wonderful. I'm quite happy with how the waterfall looks at this point. Now we didn't work on the foreground. Let's change that. First, I want to make this, this piece of ice a little more prominent. So let me use another objects mask. Again, with the rectangle select mode, all I need to do is to draw a rectangle around that piece of ice. And you can see we will get a perfect selection for that. Now let's make it pop. I'm going to start by increasing the exposure, making it slightly brighter. I'm also going to pull up the contrast to make the structure more visible. Then let's bring up the whites, further brightening up this piece of eyes. And also I'm going to add a lot of texture to give it a lot more detail. And let's pull up the clarity like this. I want to make it really shiny, almost like a diamond. So that is looking really, really good. Then there's one more thing I want to do. I want to make the rocks beneath the water surface a little more visible. So let me create a radial gradient targeting the darkest parts in the foreground like this. Obviously, we don't want to affect the eyes. So I'm going to subtract an object mask and let's draw a rectangle around that eyes. Nice. And how can we make those rocks more visible? I'm starting by bringing up the clarity and we need to make the darker areas a little brighter. So let's bring up the white, the shadows. Okay, that's looking perfect. Now that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before, which is a rather flat looking image to after. And you can see how we can nicely add a very dramatic effect to an image with masking. Now there's also a little bit of color grading involved in this shot. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I am starting in the hue panel. What I want to do is to give this whole image more of a cyan color tone because at the moment the blue tones are a little bit too much on the purple side. So I'm using the blue slider and very carefully drag it down to into the cyan range. Just a little bit. I really don't want to overdo it, but right around here, I think looks perfect. Now we can use the color grading tool to apply some very cool split toning to the shot. 
I don't want to change the highlights, but I want to add some more coldness to the midtones and the shadows. So let's start with the shadows, select the cold hue. Let's go over something around here and let's bring up the saturation. All right, that's looking good so far. Let's also use the midtones. Again, I'm using a cold color tone to create this very stylized look. Let's go with something like this. And again, bring up the saturation just a tiny bit. Again, we don't want to overdo it with the colors, but that's looking great. Then let's go down into the calibration tab. As always, with most of my images, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue. Again, this will shift the blues more towards the cyan color range. I just think it looks great. And let's bring up the saturation. Wonderful. And then one more thing we need to do is the sharpening in the details panel. As always, bring down the radius all the way, then increase the details all the way up. Hold on the Alt key while adding some masking. We want to nicely target all the interesting things of this image. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. This is looking great. This shot might be a little off. I want to kind of straighten it with the crop tool. But that's looking better, I think. All right. Now there are a ton of sensor spots, although I have cleaned the sensor. I just want to point that out. And there are a ton of people. We could clean that up in Lightroom, but it's just a slog to do it here. So I want to do it in Photoshop. So let me right click on the image, go to edit in and choose open as smart object in Photoshop. Okay. And the first thing I'm doing is to hit Control J, which will create a new layer. So I just have a backup in case I mess something up. Then let's zoom in. I'm going to use the spot healing brush to get rid of all these sensor spots. This shouldn't take too long. And I can also brush over a few of these people down below. So for this crowd, I'm going to use the remove tool, which will use AI to get rid of them. I don't think the spot healing brush can handle this many people at once. So let me just brush over them and let's see what the remove tool will do in this case. Wonderful. And I also think I want to get rid of that platform at the top of this mountain. So again, I'm just using the remove tool here and let's hope it will work. Nice. Then I also need to clean up the foreground because at the moment, this big piece of ice is surrounded by things that are a little too distracting for my taste. I'm going to use the spot healing brush and I just want to clean up a few things. So I want to get rid of this big ice piece on the right, far left side. And I want to clean this up as well on the right side here. This dead grass in the foreground is also super distracting because of the color and the brightness. So we need to clean that, that up as well. Okay, perfect. And there we have it. The finished image after just a little bit of Lightroom editing. Let me know what you think about this dramatic dark look. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you all next time.